We're glad you're with us tonight. I'm Lynn Brooks. And I'm Philip Coleman. We begin tonight with an arrest in a 35-year-old homicide case in Tuscaloosa. The investigation into Teresa Carroll White's murder started back in 1978. Now, James Michael Hayes is facing charges of capital murder in that case. WVUA's Jennifer Edwards joins us now live with more in tonight's top story. 18-year-old Teresa White was found dead back in April of 1978. Those who were close to the family, as well as investigators, are glad to see justice moving forward. Former Tuscaloosa Police Chief Ken Swindle attended church with the White family. He also worked the investigation when 18-year-old Teresa White went missing. We started looking for Teresa and uh, then on the morning, early morning, I believe it was on 20th, maybe April the 20th, 1978, that she was located up at Lake Nickel Dam. Uh, I was calling my partner. He and I went to the scene and uh, identified Teresa's body that morning. Swindle says James Michael Hayes became a suspect early in the investigation, but no arrests were ever made. I know there was a lot of evidence, a lot of circumstantial evidence at the time that pointed to Mr. Hayes as him being the suspect, uh, but there just wasn't quite enough to charge him at that time. 35 years later, Tuscaloosa County's cold case unit was able to make the arrest. A lot of it just had to do with good police work. He re-interviewed witnesses, found additional witness information, re-interviewed the suspect, and was able to bring a charge through this grand jury. Baker says Teresa White was last seen leaving the supermarket lounge in Tuscaloosa on April 15, 1978. Her body was found five days later in a wooded area near Lake Nickel Dam. Investigators say the cause of death was strangulation. Baker says Hayes was a suspect in three other cases involving strangulation of females. Hayes was charged with the murder of Regina Quarles, which happened in August of that same year. He also assaulted with intent to murder two other females. He also was charged with those. Swindle says he's proud of the police work and glad to see closure for the White family. Baker says Hayes is now facing a capital murder charge. Hayes arrived at the Tuscaloosa County Jail this morning from the Draper Correctional Facility where he's been serving a life sentence for the murder of Regina Quarles. Baker says Hayes will go back to the Draper Correctional Facility while he awaits trial for White's case. All right, thanks, Jennifer. Now an update to a shooting in Tuscaloosa County on Saturday. We're hearing from investigators about what's become an attempted murder case. The Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Unit says officers responded to Gentry Point off Highway 69 South where a 52-year-old man suffered a life-threatening gunshot wound to the chest. The man was transported to DCH by ambulance and underwent surgery. Captain Lloyd Baker with Metro Homicide says 32-year-old Darrell Craig Christian has been arrested and charged with attempted murder. The suspect's mother is dating the victim. And there was supposedly an altercation between the mother and the boyfriend that angered the suspect. An altercation occurred and then the, uh, the suspect shot the, the boyfriend. And Baker says the victim is currently in the intensive care unit but is expected to recover. Now, it may be the end of March, but the cold weather is still hanging around West Alabama. Yeah, pretty chilly. Let's get a first check on Alabama's home team forecast with Richard Scott. Richard, uh, not feeling a whole lot like spring for us. Yeah, really cold out there. It's late March, getting close to April. When we're dealing with temperatures like this. Well below normal, 46 in Tuscaloosa, 42 in Birmingham, 37 in Huntsville, where they have some light snow flurries and snow showers falling. In fact, it's falling as far south as Jasper and Fayette. Some light flurries reported. But again, the heavier snow shower activity over ports of Winston, Marion, and Coleman counties drive up 65 towards Huntsville. Some snow showers happening. No accumulation up in North Alabama. That will stay north of I-20 through tonight. Night. And even there where the snow flurries are flying now, that will quickly end this evening, especially after sunset. As temperatures cool back in the 30s, we're talking mid-30s and midnight. How cold does it get tonight? Your forecast is coming up. Police are still investigating after four people went to the hospital after a head-on collision on Highway 82 West in Northport. It happened last night in front of Spiller Furniture and Fast Track Express Car Wash. 
The collision happened around 7.30 Sunday night and the extent of the injuries are not known. Northport Police Department and Northport Fire and Rescue responded to that crash. The U.S. Supreme Court is set to hear arguments in two cases involving same-sex marriage during this week. One case involves the federal law that defines marriage as being between one man and one woman. The other case involves California's Proposition 8. That's a 2008 referendum that bans same-sex marriage in California. Meanwhile, the state's highest court there in California had ruled that to be legal, and that's when Proposition 8 declared it illegal. Meanwhile, the state's attorney general is among those that says Proposition 8 is unconstitutional. When we talk about fundamental rights as it relates to the Constitution, we are talking about those rights that we as a nation designated as being some of the most sacred of all the rights we can have. And 14 times the United States Supreme Court has described marriage as a fundamental right. You know, I think it's a really complicated issue. I've always said that the states have the right to decide. I do believe in traditional marriage. Kentucky's decided it. And I don't think the federal government should tell us otherwise. There are states that have decided in the opposite fashion. And I don't think the federal government should tell anybody or any state government how they should decide this. Now, right now, nine states and the District of Columbia do allow same-sex marriage. Another, have, another nine have civil union or strong domestic partnership laws. While they're on spring break, some students may not want to build their knowledge. So for those students, they can build something else, and they might not know they're still learning in the process. The Children's Hands-On Museum is hosting a Lego camp during this week. Each day of the week has a different theme, and today was Things That Go. The Children's Hands-On Museum focused on friction and inclined planes during today's events, and the kids got to learn about design and mathematics as well. Charm staff member Johnny Corbin says mixing Legos and learning works well for the children. Most kids like Legos. All these kids are having a blast building these things. And when you incorporate uh, educational concept when you're building the Lego, then um, it makes it fun and it'll make it stick longer with the kid. And registration is still available for the week for ages 5 till 12. The Lego camp goes until the 29th of this month. And to register, just go to www.charmonline.org. Convicted child molester Jerry Sandusky is speaking out from behind bars. Filmmaker John Ziegler recorded phone conversations he had with the former Penn State assistant football coach. Ziegler is making a controversial documentary called The Framing of Joe Paterno. Sandusky is serving a 30-year to 60-year prison sentence after being convicted of 45 counts of child sex abuse. A lawyer for one of Sandusky's alleged victims is questioning Sandusky's motives. He looks and he seeks for attention. He's narcissistic. He can't accept his punishment, and he's looking uh, to tell his story again. He's looking to tell it in a friendly form. Meanwhile, the family of the late Penn State football coach Joe Paterno is distancing itself from this documentary. The former commander of U.S. troops in Afghanistan says the American presence there has a big influence. General John Allen says the Afghan National Security Forces are moving in the right direction to eventually take over security of their country. They're not only receiving training on military matters, but also how to read and write. And so when you have that many folks who are returning to their villages after successful enlistments, uh, who are able to read and write, uh, who are able to make their numbers and express them, uh, this has the potential for some pretty dramatic change. Secretary of State John Kerry arrived in Afghanistan today to help smooth relations with Afghan President Ahmed Karzai, who recently accused the United States of collaborating with the Taliban.